<laughs> wash it all away. Um, anyway. Uh, very good. Okay, so okay. I've got something which I know more about than space, uh, and that is <laughs> anything. <laughs> Ooh, look who's a savage today. <laughs> it is exchange traded funds, oh, ETFs. But what are they? That's what I'm going to be talking about perfect. today. Oh, I'm okay, going to be cool. talking about what they are. Okay, perfect. So should we preface this with like why we're talking about this stuff? Yeah, so I think it's really important. One thing that I've noticed is that we're getting, you know, we, we do have a lot of new listeners. Yeah. And the stories that I get are that they're not particularly financially literate. So yeah. it's really, I think it's really good to kind of, you know, this is, this is a bit more educational. This is more yeah. educational than what we've been doing in the past. Mm-hmm. And I think it'll be pretty pretty good info for people. Yeah. So um, We just don't want to make any assumptions. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we, you know, the last time that we got told that we had a term that someone didn't know, mm-hmm. we gave a five second explanation of IPOs and then we were on our way. You exactly. Know? Um, so yeah, an exchange traded fund is a, so it's an ETF, mm-hmm. is a collection of stocks, which you're able to buy and sell easily in one transaction. Okay. Um, so exchange, I'm going to break down the words, exchange traded means that they're available exactly like a stock is. Yeah. So there's liquidity in the ETF market, mm-hmm. uh, which means that you should be able to buy and sell your ETFs. Mm-hmm. So that's, it's about liquidity, that um, exchange traded part. Mm-hmm. Um, What's an exchange? Well, an exchange is like the, um, is like the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ or yeah. the Australian Stock Exchange, mm-hmm. the ASX. Mm-hmm. So an exchange is, yeah, is where you go to buy and sell stocks. Mm-hmm. But now you can buy ETFs on there as so well. So it's kind of like the marketplace where you come together. Yeah. And the Australian one is called the ASX. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the, there's two American ones, right? Yeah, so there's there's two Australian ones. Yeah. There's two... There's like a Newcastle-based um, one or something. Uh, there's the Chi... Well, it's called Chi X or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's um. And so there's two in the US. There's two in the US. Yeah. Uh, New York Stock Exchange and yep. Nasdaq. Yes. Um, you got, uh, like the Nikkei and like stuff like that for um, mm-hmm. I think that's the Japanese one. Yeah. Um, but if you were just starting out, I suppose being aware of the ASX and the Nasdaq and the New York Stock Exchange would be a pretty good start. Pretty good start, yeah. Okay. So yeah, the next part of the word is fund. So that means mm-hmm. it's a collection of assets. So a fund is historically something that you would only be available to wealthy people. Yep. Um, so there's there were mutual funds and private investment funds, yep. and those assets were missing accessibility to the low level investor. Yeah, but they were also missing liquidity mm-hmm. uh, because it's something super private and yeah. you know yeah um, exclusive. So anyway, ETFs ETFs will track something. Mm-hmm. Uh, so whether it's an index, an industry, a trend, um, they'll charge you fees as an ex- what's called an expense ratio. Mm-hmm. So the expense ratio is the fee is the yearly fee. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the benefit of an ETF is diversity. So if one company goes really, really wrong, yep. uh, you usually have a small piece of 100 other companies and mm-hmm. that can make up for that. 200 other companies, 500 other companies. Yes, that um, makes a lot of sense. Depending on the ETF that you buy. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, the, they're all doing well and they make up for the loss. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the um, they're usually a lower cost than uh, buying individual companies. So if you wanted to buy all 100 of those companies, yep. you'd have to pay brokerage on each purchase yep. usually and um i mean not not as much now but you usually pay more yeah um so in terms of portfolio allocation we've got first up i'm going to talk about index tracking which is uh-huh. passively managed uh, etfs okay so the number one way that etfs work is by market cap mm-hmm. usually like that's um that's the most common type of etf so that's referred to as an index tracking etf mm-hmm. So when you're buying an ETF that operates by allocating the stocks by market cap, it's really important to go for the lowest cost option that you can get. Mm-hmm. Um, so what does that mean? The market cap is the total value of the market, that's uh, total value in the market of that one company, mm-hmm. right? So if all of it's all of the shares times the price of the share yep. uh, of that company. So yep. an ETF that tracks an index is going to hold shares based on their value in the market. Mm-hmm. So I know it's a little bit complicated, but... Um, so I'll get, I get a bit more specific. Mm-hmm. So the S&P 500 is an index which tracks the top 500 companies in the US. Yeah. So in the S&P index, uh, there's 5.52% Apple, mm-hmm. 5.28% Microsoft, 3.87% Amazon. Mm-hmm. And the reason that, that that is, is because the total market cap of the US market is $49.1 trillion. Mm-hmm. And the total market cap of Apple is 
one three trillion dollars. Mm-hmm. So that's why it makes up five point five percent of the index, right? Mm-hmm. So there's uh, there's a couple of ways that it's purchased into. Um, Could you explain a little bit more about what an index is? Yeah. So the index is so the S and P five hundred is the total market, uh, and it's it's like the the top five hundred companies. You can have in other the US. Index. You can have other. There are other indexes. Yeah. yeah. So it's, is it is it? Would you say it's like a topic and then just a list of companies within that particular? Yeah. So yeah, it's not industry. So you can't buy you can't buy directly into that index but it's an index is typically yeah just a just a list of companies that are um and the weighting is per their market cap per their market cap yeah so okay so the index is just a way to track Mm -hmm. a centralized way to track the whole market yeah but you can't buy directly into that you have to buy an etf which tracks the index okay yeah so so some of the ways that you can buy those some of the ones the most popular ones on the u.s um Stock Exchange or the NYSE and yeah, New York Stock Exchange. Yeah. Um, so SPY, which is managed by State Street. Yeah. That one's got an expense ratio of zero point zero nine percent. VOO, which is managed by Vanguard, that's got an expense ratio of zero point zero three, which is the cheapest one that I've found because BlackRock's IVV is also an expense ratio of zero point zero three. Yeah. Right. So, in that scenario, you would buy the cheapest expense ratio mm-hmm. because all they're doing is just buying and selling like stocks based on market cap. So there's no skill that's going into that. Yeah. So the cheapest expense ratio is what you want there because mm-hmm. you don't want to be paying more for a brand. Correct. Because it doesn't matter. Like you, Correct. you're making, yeah, it's logically, it makes sense to buy the lowest expense ratio. Mm-hmm. Um, so for all of our Australian fans out over there, yep. um, our indexes are called the All Lords mm-hmm. and the ASX 200. Mm-hmm. So, um, so the, all Lords is the top 500 Australian stocks. Yep. And the ASX 200 is the um, top 200 Aussie stocks. Mm-hmm. So uh, our, our top market caps at the moment at Commonwealth Bank, which is 8.9% of the index, a mm-hmm. bit more concentrated than the US, BHP 7.1% and CSL, which is 6.6%. Is Combank the largest cap? Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, so it's yeah, it makes up 8.9% of it. Wow. Um, so CSL, wow. during the middle of that. the pandemic, CSL was about 8.5% and that was the largest... Uh, market cap in Australia. Wow. So it's moved down two spots, but it is a health company. So mm-hmm. Yeah, so some of the main ETFs that track this are, you can go with IOZ by BlackRock, which mm-hmm. is expense ratio of 0.09. Mm-hmm. So it's a little bit more expensive than our um, US, than the US like options. Mm-hmm. And then there's A200 by BetaShares, which I think is the cheapest uh, in Australia. Is he in the background? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Where'd he go? He's there. Oh, he's just standing there? No, he's going in the door. Oh, right. Okay. And then uh, the expense ratio on that one zero point zero seven. So, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we have a guess. But continue. No, no, no. I'm, I don't even know if anyone's here. I'm just continuing <laughs> as though um, nothing's going on. Perfect. Yeah. You know you know me. I just, I like motorbikes and dirt bikes and that kind of thing and <laughs> riding dirt bikes and <laughs> anime. So, um, so another way to, uh, to do portfolio allocation yeah. is um, actively managed. So that was okay. passively managed. Yep. Actively managed Just tracks the index. Yep, that makes sense. So, yeah, that's the opinion based on the fund manager, right? Yep. Um, so, yeah, that gives... It's, there are some ETFs that give you really good access to, um, like, a hedge fund uh, would. Like, you know, a hedge fund yeah. was typically something that was closed off, but now you can buy stuff like that with a um, with a really good ETF. Yeah. So, Kathy Wood's um, yes. ARC funds, which we were talking about before. Obviously, it gr- gets a mention. Great example of this, you know. So you can buy into her fund. She allocates money um, to the stocks that she thinks are going to perform best for each category. Yeah. So there are a couple of key areas. There's ARK Innovation ETF, which is ARK K. Yep. Um, so that's Tesla, Zoom, Shopify, Coinbase, yep. stuff like that. Yeah. Then there's Autonomous Tech, which is ARK Q, mm-hmm. Tesla, Alphabet, a couple of other ones. Um, ARK F, which is FinTech. So you've got Square, Shopify, PayPal, Tencent, a yep. couple of other things like that. Mm-hmm. And the ARC funds have an expense ratio. All of them have an expense ratio of 0.75%, mm-hmm. which is significantly, significantly higher than a pa- like a passive one. Yeah. But that's because of how much trading there is with each fund. Mm-hmm. It's like you have to spend a lot of time. A lot of analysis. Continuing to, um, yeah, to roll over all the stocks. And like there's huge costs for them to continue like trading stuff and bringing in new stocks and all that kind of thing. Absolutely. So um, so the next one, I want, next category of ETF I want to talk about is yes. leveraged and inverse. Okay. So... Uh, you can buy something called, uh, it's like, it's ticker is bear, B-E-A-R on the ASX. Mm-hmm. So that's a beta shares and it goes against the ASX 200. Mm-hmm. So for every 
dollar that the ASX goes up, you would lose a dollar. Yeah. For every dollar the ASX goes down, you would make a dollar. Yeah. So that one's really cool for recession proofing your portfolio. Yeah, it's a good hedge. Especially if you're really worried that all your stocks are going to go down, but yeah. you don't want to spend the money. So it's really useful for minimizing your capital gains tax. Yeah. Because you don't want to spend the money selling all the stocks mm -hmm. that you hold, but you don't want to lose money. Mm -hmm. So then you you buy that and it hedges against your your stock portfolio. Mm -hmm. Uh, the next one I want to talk about is Gear, which is also Australian. So these are both by beta shares. Yep. Um, that uses internal leverage to maximize your upside mm -hmm. and your downside on the ASX. Yeah, right. So that one's about two times leveraged. So yep. that means that half of the fund... So for every dollar that you put in, half of that goes to um, getting debt, mm -hmm. which means that you double your exposure to the ASX. Mm -hmm. The ASX goes up 1%, you make 2% return. Mm -hmm. But on, on the opposite side of that, there's a huge downside because the ASX goes down 1%, you lose 2%. Yeah. That's not exactly how it works, yeah. but it's a pretty good representation yeah, of how it is. Because like, it can be 1.5 that you could make or you could lose yeah. one, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's, it's not exactly always tracking because it's really tricky to line up all the futures contracts and the debt and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one I want to talk about, I want to talk about some US options for that. There's SQQQ, which is the inverse of the NASDAQ. Oh, yeah. But I think it's leveraged against the NASDAQ. Yeah. Um, so you can get, yeah, inverse leveraged, mm -hmm. um, which means that, yeah, you you can triple your, if the if the NASDAQ goes down 1%, mm -hmm. um, you can make 3% yep. by use, leveraging the inverse of mm -hmm. the NASDAQ. So it's a little bit complicated for mm -hmm. our, uh, our new ones, but you can brush right past that because you don't need to buy that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then TQQ is, um, TQQQ in the US is one thing that I've bought before, which is triple leveraged regular NASDAQ. So yeah. that one's really cool. That's, um, yeah, always going up. So, mm -hmm. I mean, no, it's not. Well, but <laughs> <laughs> always going up when the NASDAQ's going up. Um, one thing that I hold so here's here's another way that you can buy etfs yeah so you can buy a foreign currency um etf on your exchange based on someone mm -hmm. else's index mm -hmm. so one thing that i have is ndq mm -hmm. which is on the asx yeah that's an asx ticker yeah so it's the nasdaq 100 etf yeah that you can buy with australian dollars on the et on the asx yeah but it tracks the top 100 tech companies on the nasdaq yeah but this one's different not only because you're exposed to foreign exchange risk which is problematic but it's also um, the fund doesn't hold the underlying stocks. Mm -hmm. It uses futures, futures contracts to keep the index tracked at all times because the prices become more accurate then. Because in Australia, the ASX is open in the nighttime for the US. Oh, yeah, true. So the NASDAQ is technically closed. Mm -hmm. But how do you make a price based on that? Because the yeah. market maker has to make the price. Yeah. yeah. So um, so then you can go, you can go a bit more industry-based. So... Um, there's an ETF specifically based on uh, sports betting. It's BETZ by Round, uh, Round Hill Investing. In what? On what exchange? Uh, that's in the US. Um, right. There's ESPO by Vanek, which is a video gaming and esports ETF. All of these are about 7.7%. Um, yeah. Um, that kind of thing. Uh, there's specific, you can buy a portfolio of bonds, um, Australian government bonds if you want. You can buy corporate bonds. You can buy bank bonds. Interesting. Uh, and then you can buy gold in an ETF. So yeah. I have IVV, I think, mm -hmm. on the on the uh, New York Stock Exchange. Yeah. So that's a really cool one. Mm -hmm. um, the next one, the next part that I'm going to talk about is liquidity. Mm -hmm. So market makers are really important in the liquidity portion. Yeah. So um, one thing that can make you feel safe, I guess, with ETFs is that if there are no retail investors buying and selling the stock, mm -hmm. um, it's vital that there's a very large bank there to back it up. Yeah. Um, so in the equity dealing room, they'll um, they'll be there to make a bid and ask price mm -hmm. for anyone that wants to buy or sell for a certain level of, of purchasing. Um, and so that's the level, they, they make a spread on that as well. Um, but like that's, you know, they have to be prepared to, to, yeah, make the bid and the ask. It's important that they're like able to do that so they can keep the, um, the market moving when there's like low liquidity. Mm -hmm. So like they have to keep doing that. But it's also important that the ETF manager is able to buy and sell the individual stocks within the ETF mm -hmm. uh, because with that, and th they also use banks as liquidity providers to do that mm -hmm. um, because it's important to keep the portfolio allocation correct inside the fund. Yeah. Because if, you know, Commonwealth Bank's going down or whatever, 
they need to sell it to keep the market cap yeah. correct as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's it's tricky. They need to keep adjusting mm-hmm. like their their individual stocks in there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's um that's that's ETFs. That's a little rundown. That's interesting. So for um for a first time uh, buyer, yes, how would you suggest the progression? And what's uh what is the like the safest option? What's the um, most volatile option? What what would be like a quick? Yeah. So so like obviously, if you're buying a passively managed mm-hmm. market cap based ETF, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. that's the that's the cheapest way to kind of get into it. Mm-hmm. It's also the it's also definitely the best option to like. You definitely don't want to get too complicated when you don't know much. Yeah. So like, yeah, it's it's pretty like it's a pretty good idea just to buy a S&P 500. Yeah. And you can do that and then just not think about it again. You can exactly. just keep topping it up. Yeah, it's good. That kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's... um. So you could start there. So, okay, so say someone... That's a great starting point. So yeah. someone wants to... What, they just want... Ex- they've got some capital. They want exposure to the stock market. Uh, they don't have time or knowledge yet, um, but they just want to get in. Yeah. That would be yeah. a good way to just sort of jump in. For sure. And even with no knowledge, you're not making a silly decision, potentially. Yeah, yeah. Usually you're not. And... The indexes will, you know, if you look at the, if you go back and look at the last 115 years, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to be, you're going to be doing all right with an index fund. Like yeah. there's certain periods in time where it has taken 10 years to recover, but it's all about the long, long term yeah. game, you know? So like, and that was literally 1930 mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and for the NASDAQ, it was um, 2001 to, I don't know, 2009 or so. Okay. So that's a good but, option. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, no, that's that's um yeah. okay. So that's a good option as opposed to someone jumping in and being like, "Oh, I've heard people talking about X stock." Yeah, so if they, I'll just buy that. Yeah, especially it's a good option if you're considering if you're a brand new investor and you're thinking, yeah. "Oh, what's what's best? Should I buy mm-hmm. um, VOO on the New York Stock Exchange, mm-hmm. which is the S and P five hundred? Yeah, or should I buy Arc X? Yeah, you know, okay. or Arc K or whatever." Yeah. Like high growth Tesla, yeah, yeah, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um. So yeah, you if you don't know much about the innovation side of yeah. growth ETFs or yeah. whatever, yeah, it's probably a good idea just to buy the S and P five hundred. Yes. When you're starting out, yeah. So you go to your broker yeah. and you look up one of these tickers and mm-hmm. you you fund it with your cash yeah. and you're able to buy yeah. yeah able to buy one of these ETFs and um okay and yeah obviously there's um. Yeah, some great Australian options out there as well for the ASX 200, yeah. and, uh, that kind of thing. So, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And then potentially as you, um, what I've found is as you become exposed to different assets, then like you're interested in them and you'll research them and you'll talk about them with people. Yeah. yeah. And so then your knowledge will grow and then you might think, oh, I could really see like the space of, um, you know, well, it's a bad example because I don't really have any space stuff in their ETF. But yeah, 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 yeah. You might think, oh, like uh uh AI is gonna be the next thing. Yeah. And then so if you if you really have um an opinion on that, then you could go and find an ETF. Might be an ARC ETF that um just specializes in AI and then you could buy that. Yeah. Um and then you could look at what they have in their holdings and you could research the companies, right? Yeah. yeah. You can see what percentage of it is uh of the companies are in each ETF. And then you could maybe one day, if you get some really um, strong, you know, opinions about a company, you could buy the underlying company. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, it's a, it's a great start. <laughs> um, okay, uh, that's great. Um, that's really good because, as you say, there's so many people who um, are just sort of wanting to get involved with the stock market, and so that I think for me, an index tracked ETF is is awesome start, and then maybe uh, a managed ETF, yeah. and then like the leverage stuff. I'd say maybe like. Don't bother. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So that's that's something that if you really advanced into it, yeah, yeah you definitely that, don't want to start with index. Yeah, exactly. Sort of like uh, index and then manage. Have a look at some actual stocks one day, maybe yeah. get a really good idea of what's happening. Have some sort of special idea that something's going to go up and down. Then go and get some sort of leveraged ETF. Yeah. So my my main tip for starting out is obviously you want to do your research on on your market because like if you're yeah. You know, I don't know what I don't know what the UK market looks like compared no, to exactly. You know, yeah, it's good. Um, compared to France, compared to you know whatever. Yeah. Um, not that we'll have that many European listeners, but um, I know that the S and P five hundred and the ASX. That's like that's what I know. Yeah. Um, and I know that they always recover, and that they're yeah. always they've got strong governments and strong companies. So yeah. like, I'm not really worried about the long term vision. Yeah. And it's like you want to be holding it for you want to think, oh yeah, I'm I'm not worried about daily price movements. I'm just 
getting exactly. out of this in 10 years. It's a good tip 15 for 15 years, new person 20 years, you know. Whereas you might jump in and lose 30% in your first year. Yeah. And you're like, oh no, uh, 30%. Then you pull out because you're scared, yeah. you know. Yeah. So like continuously dollar cost averaging is a really good yep. method. I'll, I'll do something on dollar cost averaging, yeah. you know. Oh, we've mentioned point. it before, but it's worth diving into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and also looking for the lowest expense ratio if you're doing something passive. Yeah, so smart. low expense ratio, that's a good... It's a good. good one to research. Look up a few companies, you know, you got Vanguard, BlackRock. Um, they pretty much operate in every country. Yeah. Um, you got State Street and in yeah. Australia, you have Beta Shares, which is really cool. And these are companies that um, create, they, they create the ETFs. They create ETFs. So yeah, they yeah, create them good. and then they um, charge the management fee. Yep. The management fee also is one thing that I should talk about. Mm-hmm. That's taken internally. So you don't physically pay yeah, that's good. a fee. Um, that's just taken out of your gain. Yep. So you just lose a small portion. Exactly. So it's good gains. to be aware of, but you would never notice it. But yeah, you don't have to, you don't really have to worry about it. It's not something yeah. you have to think about yeah. after you've bought your ETFs. Yeah. yeah. It's good. So yeah. Done. That's